this is our first lesson over complex numbers. Uh, I'm not going to read the standard. I will let you read it on the notes. Okay, this is a complex number. A complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. And I is equal to the square root of negative 1. A combination of real and imaginary number in the form of A plus BI, where A is your real part and BI is your imaginary part. A and B are the real numbers and I is the unit imaginary number. I is just defined as the square root of negative 1. The values of A and B can be 0. And these are all complex numbers. I apologize for the bell. These are all complex numbers. 1 plus I, 2 minus 6I. This one has the imaginary part, negative 5.2I, and no real part. That's because the real part is 0. And then 4. 4's imaginary part is 0. All right, this is how I is defined. I is equal to the square root of negative 1, and it is called I. When we square I, and we square the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, we will get negative 1. That's why I square is equal to negative 1. If we add yet another square root of negative 1, when we cube it, then we get negative because of these two, negative 1 times the square root of negative i, which is we take that i and we just make it negative, negative i. All right, i to the fourth power, there are four of those. <coughs> so if these two are negative 1 and these two are negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Now, <coughs> what I have written up here is really, really, really important. Um, we are going to be evaluating powers of I that go really, really high. So every fourth one of these, every if I went to I to the fifth, it would repeat and it would become this. Then I to the sixth would repeat and become this. And then seven, eight, and it would keep going that, what, that way. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, like that. So the easiest way to do this is when you're evaluating I, when you are evaluating I to some power like I have here, I to the 10th power, if you take that and divide it by 4, if you take that 10 and divide it by 4, that will give you 8 and then you have 2 left over. The leftover is what this, it tells you the position that this is in. So I to the 10th you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I of the 10 lands here at negative 1. So the easiest way to do it is to take these big old numbers and divide them by 4 and see what's left. If I had 1 left, a remainder of 1, it would be equal to I. If I had 2 left over, it's equal to negative 1. If I had 3 left over, it's equal to negative I. And if it divides evenly and there's nothing left over, then it's 1. Now, years ago, I came up with, a, I hope, an easy method. So when you're dividing on your calculator and you, <clears throat> and you get an answer, if you hit your SD button on the calculator, it will give you a point something at the end. So if you end up with a 0.25, then you have I and one left over. If you end up with a 0.5, your answer is negative one. If you end up with 0.75, it's negative I. If it divides evenly, it is one. So, hence, this is what we did here. This went 0.5, this is 0.25, or one left over, so it's I. This went evenly, and it is 1. Now, if you think the order that they are in, remember that your first one is I, your last one is 1, and those are your positive numbers. In the middle are your negatives, and they alternate. I, negative 1, negative I, 1. I, negative 1, negative I, 1. I need one, need I one, like that. Now, why do we have I? Because we can't take the square root of negative numbers. So since I is defined as the square root of negative one, 
what we do is we take negative one out from under the radical and we just put it here and do I. Then we square root what's left, which is two. And so this is two I. Same thing here. We do the exact same thing, only we have a negative number. So we pull I out. Then we simplify what is left in the same way that we did in the last unit. And that gives us five I M N squared on the square root of three M. Thank you.